Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales of, of, of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Negotiations written by Glitchkey. I walked into the room, avoiding direct eye contact with the alien waiting for me. Its huge eyes just looked like a jet black sclera, set in a sack of vaguely damp, wrinkled grey leather. If eyes are a window into a soul, this creepy little guy would have given Satan a run for his money. They just put me on edge somehow. I'd have to make eye contact anyway, but it would wait. I strode out to the meeting table, pulled out the chair and sat down. I shuffled around my bag for a moment before pulling out a small piece of tech, which I set on the table in front of me. Before we begin, I want to be sure of a few things. This device you provided us with, it's 100% effective at understanding and translating languages, correct? The alien across from me nodded. It's nice little allowance that made for comfort, learning our body language, but its bulbous head threw the whole gesture off. It made me think of one of those old inflatable toys with a weight on the bottom that would lean too far to one side before bouncing back up. Woobles or something. I didn't really matter. Nearly. We occasionally find a race with one or two concepts that it has trouble with, but that's easily smoothed over. I took a deep breath and waited a moment to compose myself. This whole thing was going to be more trying than not interrupting old Miggins up the street while he went on about whatever racist sentiment was in his head at the moment. One uh, or two. Uh, okay, that's odd. The alien blinked. Eyelids came in from not just the top and bottom, but also the sides. That's just plain creepy. Reminded me of one of those really old movies they threw on the media blacklist pretty much as soon as first contact started. Something in black, whatever it was. I remember seeing it as a kid, and that guy at the beginning had nothing on this alien's eyes. Have you already found something it can't translate? I nodded, then pulled out my communicator and scrolled through a few documents. I really needed to clean this thing out. Can't believe I didn't get around to it before coming to such an important meeting. Imagine a little debacle that would result if I opened exactly the wrong thing. Never can know what there might be, honestly. I was thought, yes, sir, mind humoring me for a few minutes. The alien steepled its hands together and leaned forward. That's just plain creepy. I wondered how they learned such context-specific body language. Not that it really mattered, I guess. Not my problem. Certainly. After all, it can take years to accept a race into the Federation. Nodding again, I pulled up the document on my communicator, then leaned back in my chair as I began. This was going to be more interesting than that time your classmate Jimmy found some old matches somewhere and almost burned the school down by mistake. Excellent, um, this shouldn't take too much time. I mentioned that we found some issues with your device, sir. Allow me to demonstrate. Espionage. The little device on the table beeped, and a red light flashed. Error. No analog found. I sighed. That one had been an accident. We just had the thing sitting in the conference room while we discussed the implications of the visit when it came up. But when something that simple for us to understand came up, we had to try more. Reverse engineering. Again, a beep and a flash of red. Error, no analog found. Spycraft. And again with the beep. This was going to get irritating if I didn't speed things up a bit. Too bad we hadn't managed to find a mute option for this feature. Error, no analog found. Overwhelming force. Error, no scorched earth. Error, kamikaze. Error. Blitzkrieg stealth. Mutually assured destruction. Acceptable losses. Pyric victory. Guerrilla warfare. Encirclement. Entrenchment. Siege. The device gave off a series of distressed beeps, punctuated by rapid blinking of the little red light, and almost felt sorry for it. Almost. Too many errors detected. Rebooting. Running self-diagnostics. No discrepancies found. I paused and glanced across the table at the alien before looking down at the translator. This is going to hit harder than a washed-up Hollywood actor with no auditions and less money to hit rock bottom. Xenocide. The chair across from me clattered to the ground as the alien practically fell out of its seat. I didn't blame the poor thing. 
Of all the aggressive, militaristic words we tried, that was one of the ones that we least expected to translate. I mean, really. Who has a word for the intentional extermination of an entire sapient species when they don't understand fundamental hostile international mechanics like spying? Why do you have a word for... What was all of that just now? I chuckled a bit while motioning for the alien to sit back down. His reaction had been pretty good, perfectly suitable, for one of those hammed-up old dramas where the hero realizes that they've been working with the villain all along. We were confused about that, too, so we took a look at the information you sent as part of the first contact with us. We noticed something interesting. Every single race in your federation is carnivorous. Why is that? The alien seemed smaller somehow as it settled back into the seat. It looked kind of like a balloon slowly losing air. If that balloon was made of moldering grey leather with eyes that made your spinal column decide it wanted a holiday in Fiji. First contact has always been made after sapient races make it to multiple worlds. We've never found a sapient herbivorous race which failed to destroy themselves in resource wars and aggressive actions. We've never found herbivores capable of surviving long enough to leave their own world. I leaned forward in the chair and smiled while finally making direct eye contact with the alien. I think the poor thing shriveled when I did that. Not that I blamed it. Imagine your reaction when you start to put the pieces together and realize that your friendly, upstanding next-door neighbor might actually be the world's most wanted criminal. And the races you have found, while commonly using threat displays, do not waste resources on walls that they cannot easily win, correct? The alien nodded as it slouched a bit in its chair. It looked kind of like it was trying to hide. Who wouldn't want to hide from the monsters in the closet? Wasted resources means decreased likelihood of survival. I shrugged. That was true enough, though rather coldly logical. Dispassionate logic like that has never been our strong suit. Then again, that's why I was in this situation in the first place, so it evens out. Then yet, herbivores constantly waste resources on aggression, on movement, on having more young than will possibly survive. The alien was staring at me. I'm not sure when last time it blinked was. I wondered if those eyes needed some kind of lubrication to keep them from drying out. Probably. They looked a bit less glossy than they did before. And they die for it. That's exactly why we were never encountered space-sparing herbivores. Their inherent aggression is their own demise. I held eye contact... I would have almost sworn the alien was a weird statue right now. Don't know who would commission a statue made of old greasy leather, but I was sure someone with too much money and too little sense would give it a shot. Indeed, now back to the subject at hand. I'll ask you before we continue, what can you offer humans for joining your federation? The alien sputtered as it started moving again. I think it actually looked offended. Maybe it didn't see where this was going. Not that it really mattered, I guess. I mean, it probably mattered about as much as posting a formal complaint to a new corporate policy, which is to say, not at all. We've already sent the offer. You've seen that, I'm sure. I nodded and began to tap an staccato rhythm on the table with my fingers. I never could remember where I learned the stupid tune. I've known it as long as I can remember, and it just moves into my head on occasion and sticks around, like that one couch-surfing friend who doesn't understand the idea of wearing out their welcome. And I'm asking, what else do you have to offer? The alien just shook its head again, staring at the device. I wondered if it was thought that we might have tampered with it, as if we knew how. The little thing was way beyond our current abilities. We had some scientists pry it open and look inside, just to be sure. Nothing. I'm not sure why you're... I raised my hand, cutting him off. Huh. Not sure why that worked. Did they learn that much of our body language? Really creepy. If that's the case, or maybe I just had it on edge. I don't know. I guess it didn't matter. May I have permission to connect my data pad to the ship's computers? The alien glanced away from me for a moment. I assumed it was checking in with his superior somehow. Maybe it was psychic to an extent. 
or maybe they had an implant of some sort. We'd find out, eventually. Yes, if you like. I sighed. I guess that makes things easier for us. I didn't think anyone was going to like what I was about to do. This whole thing felt kind of like one of those hollow vids of an accident, where you know what's coming and don't want to keep going, but for some reason you just can't seem to stop and pull yourself away. Computer, show Hiroshima. A screen appeared in the air above my datapad. It started playing back an old, grainy video, shaky, taken by hand from an aircraft in a firefight. Below, you can barely see the city being blotted out by a massive explosion. A cloud of smoke, fire, and debris was rapidly climbing into the sky, bluing, growing, blooming into an eerie and easily recognized mushroom cloud. That's, uh, you're using weapons of that scale on a population center. How recent was this? I shrugged and closed the video. The screen on my datapad went back to the document I had up earlier. Gotta love how well they managed to predict this whole thing. I made a mental note to recommend a raise for whoever set up the document for me. Three centuries ago, prior to our invention of spaceflight, part of a much larger conflict, this is a relatively minor example of uh, overwhelming force. Error? No, uh, shut it, computer. Now, info sheet. Battle of Stalingrad. A series of graphs and diagrams appeared above my datapad. They showed resources, times, maps, battle plans, and death tolls. Images were interspersed throughout, as were annotations on the tactical value of this, the emotional value of that. Prominent amongst them was a single apartment building, including notes on sniping from the roof and support via tunnels. That... what purpose with that? Why? What? Again, I raised my hand to cut him off before closing the info sheet. Maybe it was both. Nah, couldn't be. The only way that it was both having this guy on edge and our body language is if it somehow had our body language built in. Unsettling thought, but not exactly likely. Because Stalingrad was an advantageous location, and the people who died there were considered acceptable losses. Era, computer, show gallery, General Sherman's march to the sea. A multitude of images appeared over the datapad. Rail lines and roads intentionally broken and destroyed. Farms and fields scoured clean and left to fallow. Buildings and towns razed to the ground. A broken people left to mourn and starve. So much waste. That can't be intentional, can it? I glanced at the images, the wanton destruction that campaign caused, and the very orders that caused it. That kind of thing may be considered morally reprehensible now, even a war crime, but it wasn't always. At that time, the strategy was extolled as one of the reasons the war ended the way it did. It was intentional. The alien stared at me, its reflective black eyes bigger than I'd ever seen them before. Creepy as all how, that's for sure. I'd rather not deal with these kinds of meetings in the future. Maybe after this, I could negotiate for some kind of retirement... But why? I tapped my datapad and closed the gallery, then leaned back and tossed my feet up on the table. I already knew how this was going to end, so I might as well relax. Because it rendered the enemy unable to use resources Sherman couldn't keep. Computer assemble and show video grouping, RTS games. A large grid of videos came up, showing a huge range of scenes, largely battle. The settings varied from open space to deep sea, from early history to the far future. Even battles across space and time could be seen. The translator can't have gotten that right. Those are military tactical simulators, higher level than anything that I have ever seen or heard of. I laughed as I closed out all the videos and turned back to the alien, creepy and unsettling as it might be. I'm pretty sure I was terrifying, the poor thing. Not that I really felt sorry for it. Not at all. No, they aren't. Those are games, toys, for fun. And they're a couple hundred years out of date. From what I've seen, nearly every human capable of coherent speech is capable of tactfully overwhelming your federation. And since we're already here, in space, it's too late for you to say no. So, I'll ask again. What do you have to offer us? End of story.
The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I'd just like to thank the T5 members and Patreons. Alithia, Barky, Feudic Yol, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper, Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, Lord Ashrakal, and White Van420.